percent of the population of the productive population of African population is going to have all these NCDs, mm. non-communicable diseases. Mm. But they found out that uh, there are three factors of predisposition: genetics, okay, okay. environment, and lifestyle. Mm. I'm saying here today that more than 50 percent of non-communicable diseases are traceable to lifestyle changes. Mm. And I'm saying that these lifestyle changes are due to mental health challenges. Mm. It may not be that you are stripping yourself naked and you are walking yeah. in the, in the, yeah. on the street. It doesn't mean that uh, you carry cutlasses and you want to kill somebody. Mm. But anything that affects the state of your mind from it not being at peace mm. has a cascade of effect on your heart. Mm. on your kidney, mm. on your liver. Mm. And it can even begin to affect your diet. Mm. You see people who, and I, I wrote an article one day and I said, why is it that it is when we become successful that we want to destroy ourselves? Mm. Have you noticed it? In that? Mm. It's when somebody becomes a commissioner, mm -hmm. becomes uh, a professor, or becomes uh, a CMD, or whatever, that we begin to come up with a lifestyle that wants to destroy us. Here, yeah, we say that all for like geo. It's, <laughs> at times it looks like People are not aware of it, but mm. that's what the office pushes them into. Yeah. They don't have enough time to rest. That's right. They don't have enough time to eat the kind of food they want to eat. Mm -hmm. There are more worries in their head mm -hmm. than those people who are not in that. Office. And it begins to mm. engineer destructive lifestyle changes. Mm. What I see at the, back, at the bottom, at the bottom mm. is mental health challenges. Mm. So there is no health without mental health. Mm. Because mental health is the forefront around which all other indices of health revolves. Mm. When a woman is psychologically disturbed, if something disturbs a woman's mind, mm. she may miss her period. That's true. When a man has a bad news, a dangerous news, mm. the blood pressure can shoot up. Mm. How does it do that? It means there's a connection between our mind and all the engines mm. in our body. Mm. So it therefore means that mental health is at the center of well-being, both physical mm. and mental well-being. Mm. So there is really no health without mental health. Mm. But as a pastor, I take a, I take a further step. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that there is really no mental health without spiritual health, mm. which is what Apostle exactly. John was talking about. Mm. Long before medical scientists redefined health, mm. You know, they, they've redefined health. Mm. The health is not just the absence of infirmity. Mm. It's not just the fact that, oh, I don't, my body is not hot. Exactly. Uh, I don't have any cough. Uh, but that you're also not healthy. So health is not just the absence of infirmity, mm. but a state of psychological, social, and spiritual well-being. Mm. Mm. Because you may not have infectious diseases, but mm -hmm. it's your mind at rest. Mm. Because when that is not there, then you are not healthy. Mm. Mm. You are not healthy mm. until you are mentally healthy. Absolutely. And you are not mentally healthy until there is a spiritual uh, health. health. Mm. The spiritual health is the foundation. Yes, please. The mental health and, and then, then the general well-being. In your life. In, your, in one's life. Yes, please. Wow, this is very instructive mm -hmm. to see how the scripture, mm -hmm. you know, explains all this absolutely spiritual men i mean through their minds mm -hmm. brought out this long no. before science Apostle john has defined health you know we started <laughs> redefining it from it's, our experience exactly apostle paul uh, apostle john. john had written about the definition of health in that third john verse mm. 2 mm. that i wish above everything that you prosper in, as your soul prospers mm. to be in health mm. even as your soul that the index of well-being, mm. the index of prosperity is soul prosperity. Mm. When a man has not achieved soul prosperity, he can have all the monies in this world. He's still sick. Mm. A man, they may test your body and say, your body is okay. It's exactly. Okay. But if your soul is not healthy, not if healthy. your mind is not healthy, if you don't have a robust mental health, mm. there's still something wrong. Mm. This is very, very quite, quite deep, yeah. you know. To see how um, our spirit 
connect with our mental health mm -hmm. and how the mental health also connect with our general well-being yeah. yeah you know doctor where you were you you were talking you were um, uh, laying emphasis on you know the 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 mental health mm -hmm. as a fulcrum mm -hmm. for the general well-being absolutely and that if a man or a woman is not mentally stable mm -hmm. he can have other form of disease absolutely he can shut down is internal organs mm -hmm. that's serious through lifestyle changes mm. destructive lifestyle changes sleep mm. there's a scripture that says he giveth his beloved until you lose your sleep you won't appreciate mm. that scripture insomnia mm. when people don't sleep mm. it's a serious problem a serious one during sleep there is more activity going on in your body system than when we are when we are awake mm. there are a lot of physiological processes biochemical restoration mm. physiological mm. restoration mm. That is taking place. That's regenerative. Regenerative, yes. Mm. So that if somebody does not sleep for like three days, mm. it can break down, mm. both physically and mentally. I mean, look at the case of that uh, medical doctor who was on on shift. He wanted to. They said was not on shift. Yes. For three days, non-stop. Mm. Although they debunked that. Okay. I think it may have some other issues, you okay. know, because when they check the roster, okay, they found that, that it's not true. He was okay. at home with the dad, okay, and went to church, okay. But you see, you see, does it's also instructive that mm. we must learn to rest our body. Our body. Rest is not just you're on the bed. Some mm. people are on the bed, <laughs> but, but their mind is Bulgaria. Mm. As it's moving from Bulgaria, go to America. From America, <laughs> there's no peace. It's only God that can give you rest. Mm. That's what that scripture in Matthew eleven twenty eight. He said, "Come unto me." Mm. All you that are stressed and are burning out, mm. and I will give you rest. rest. You come and learn of me. One translation says, let me be your teacher. teacher. Then you, by yourself, will Find. give rest mm. to your soul. Mm. Mm. So rest is more than sleep. Mm. It's tranquility of the mind. Mm. It's quietness of the soul. Mm. When you don't, somebody can keep quiet and yet the, mo the soul is still very mm. noisy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this person is still, you know, some people are noisy even in their quietness. That's right. Because That's they've right. not achieved rest inside of inside their mind. Of them. Mm. Mm -hmm. And it's a huge problem. And See? all these things have their physical and mental health implications. Mm. Mm -hmm. But spirituality is actually the sure way mm. of achieving mental health okay before we get to the spiritual side i want us to look at the indices that shows that someone is mentally healthy okay from your profession yes from our profession the who mm. uh, has come up with about four strong criteria and that's what we use as psychiatrists when mm. they say they bring somebody to us or we look at the person and say this person is not yet well mm. you know the average person feels the person who is mentally healthy who is mentally ill okay is the person on the street mm. or who is talking to himself alone mm. or who is wearing dirty clothes mm. and uh, no 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 a lot of us are wearing our clothes <laughs> living in the house and uh, appear normal but we are not mentally well mm. four criteria number one if you are mentally healthy you must discover your potential mm. god give you potential i must find a template to express it mm. it gives you some joy Mm. It gives you beyond money. Mm -hmm. It gives you some satisfaction. Fulfillment. Oh yes. Number two. That's why somebody who goes after money and does not express his potential is still looking for something. Mm. In fact, that's why he keeps looking for more money <laughs> to fill in that gap, that vacuum in his life. That's how you see uh, uh, multi billionaires want their children to go to school and find training. Mm. They can't say that we have found money. We have found all of that, but we are still not fully satisfied mm. why don't you find something to do mm. in the direction of your potential and express it mm. number two life is full of challenges mm. when you are challenged the way you cope with it should not cause injury to you and to others mm. you know, a lot of people who take alcohol to destroy themselves or smoke marijuana or smoke uh, whatever they, they smoke that injures them in the process of trying to cope with, st with stress okay. is because they are not mentally healthy. Mm. So coping with stress should not enjoy you and should not enjoy others. Mm. When some people, are, when, it, when some heads of family are going through stress at work, mm. the wife knows that it's going to be yeah. a terrible time. Yeah. The children, they know. Or some mothers, when they are stressed at the place of work, mm. they beat the hell out of the children's head. Mm. Some 
you, we call it transfer of aggression. Mm -hmm. If you are mentally healthy, you shouldn't transfer aggression. You must find a way of resolving your challenge mm -hmm. in such a way that you are not destroying yourself and you are not injuring others. Mm -hmm. The third criteria is that you must be productive. Mm -hmm. No matter how little it is, you must be engaged in something that is productive, meaning that the society is aware of it and is ready to pay for it. Mm -hmm. You may not be the richest man in Africa, yeah. but you have that connection to society. You're doing something, and of course, it's earning you a living. Value. Oh, yes, please. So if somebody is lazy, it's a form of mental illness. Mm. We just call it laziness. It could be the person is mentally ill. Mm. Somebody wake up in the morning, that's the time you turn on your radio and you're dancing. Everybody has gone to work, or you're sleeping. It's not that you work overnight. Something's wrong. Number four, the fourth criteria is that you must not be a nuisance to society. Mm -hmm. You must be contributing something to the harmonious functioning of the society. Mm -hmm. It means, therefore, you will not be a menace to society. Mm -hmm. So when you see somebody who has fulfilled all the three so-called, and it's a nuisance to society, mm -hmm. it's not mentally well. Mentally so these four well. criteria positions a person in the path or in the status of mental health. Mm -hmm. It is powerful. Mm -hmm discovery of potential mm -hmm. and expressing it yes and then coping well it's with stress. stress and not be a nuisance and to be yourself, a nuisance and, to to yourself and, all to, and to others you know, knowing that all humans will yes, face challenges. You will face challenges yes you can't escape challenges no 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 and that the productive. ability yes to be able to go through without breaking down and yourself being and then being nuisance people. to other people Show that you're mentally healthy. Absolutely. And then being productive. Being productive. Being productive in life. And then contributing something to society. To society. And not be a menace. Mm. It's a tall order. Mm. And I think that is what made the medical scientists to say, okay, this criteria is heavy. Mm. Because we, we used to think people were healthy only where they don't have infections. Exactly. Now we see some people don't have infection, yet they are also not so healthy. Mm. So it means it took the paradigm of mental health from the clinical part into a socio-economic, yeah, yeah. socio-cultural, yeah. and spiritual spirituality, yeah. which is what Apostle Paul, Paul Apostle had, John had John seen long, long time. time. And I defined as I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health as your soul pros prospers. And because the soul prosperity is the rate determining step. In, in, in that verse, there are three prosperity mentioned. Mm -hmm. The soul prosperity, mm -hmm. the body prosperity, mm -hmm. and the financial prosperity. Absolutely. And that the, 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 the background mm -hmm. to the other two mm -hmm. is the soul prosperity. Absolutely. So if I have body prosperity, I don't have soul prosperity. According to WHO, yes. I have not prospered. You are not well. You are not well. <laughs> I'm not well. <laughs> And if I have financial prosperity yes. and the soul is not prospering, I become a menace to society. You're a nuisance. Oh my goodness. Mm. So, and you know, the key to that mental health is spirituality. So that's, that's the next thing. So if, if soul prosperity is that valuable, how do I achieve it? Or is it automatic? No, sir. Mm. If you look at the book of Galatians chapter 5 and you look at the fruitage of the Spirit, okay, all of them, love, joy, self-control, mm. they are the measures of mental health. Mm. Nobody has the fruitage of nobody has the fruitage of the fruit of the Spirit mm -hmm. and be mentally ill. Mm. Love, joy, forgiveness, mm. long-suffering, mm. forbearance. Mm. That's mental health. Mm. If when a person doesn't have all of that, that is mentally sick, mm. the works of the flesh, lasciviousness, mm. heresy, mm. party spirit, mm. bickerings, mm. all of those things, mm. I want to believe that psychiatrists will be able to find as many diagnostic categories in the works of the flesh as it is in our textbook mm. from the works of the flesh. Yeah, yeah. So the fruit of the spirit. Mm -hmm are indicator that somebody is mentally healthy. The works of the flesh show that this person is mentally healed. And so if you are a Christian mm. and you are lacking in the fruit of the spirit, it means it doesn't mean that you are not just going to hell, but that you are also living in hell here. <laughs> and that you are not mentally well. That's terrible. To go through hell 
and to go to hell. <laughs> because you can't harbor mm. all that fruitage of the flesh. Bitterness. Bitterness. Let me, let me put the, yeah. of the flesh. Look, bitterness. Yeah, bitterness. Look at uh, Hebrews 12, 15. It says, mm. don't fill up the grace of God. Mm. Lest the root of bitterness mm. spring up to trouble you and many be defiled. Mm. Bitterness poisons your blood mm. and gives you hypertension. That's true. It brings some chemicals that makes your heart to misbehave. Negative and, have an and then it affects the way you think. You begin to... I've never fought somebody before and you're planning how to fight the person. <laughs> <laughs> Through bitterness. You can't sleep. The strategy. For the weekend. strategy. You wake up... <laughs> There's no peace you to wake, the weekend. <laughs> you wake up in the middle of the night and start planning <laughs> the, the person is when you are going to meet the person. <laughs> how you are going to behave. Wow. I am going to look at the person. <laughs> Before you know it, if psychiatrists grab you like this, I'll give you the The same energy that could be used for productivity is not being used for evil works. <laughs> so, so, what we're calling mental health is actually the footage of the spirit. Mm. And we are not, when we say we are born again, we are not born with soul prosperity. Mm -mm. Our soul was sick. When Adam lost it in the garden. That's right. That's why you don't teach a young child, a baby, mm -hmm. growing baby, to be selfish. Mm -hmm. have, you watched, have you watched young people stealing each other's toy and uh, taking it and fighting? If you see the way they fight, mm -hmm. the way they behave, you understand? Mm -hmm. You find mm -hmm. out that we are programmed to self destruction mm -hmm. through the Adamic sin. <laughs> it takes Christ, the second Adam, mm -hmm. who is not just a, it's a life giving spirit. You know, the first Adam. Is a soul. Yeah, that's it's right. a living soul. That's right. But the second demon is a life giving Given spirit. spirit. So when the life of God comes into our soul now, it begins to reprogram it. It begins to rescript it mm. and begins to infuse the footage of the spirit mm. into the templates of our mind mm. Mm. and takes us in the direction of mental well being. Okay, so, so the, the now. The, the aspect of the, the impact of my spirituality mm -hmm. on my mental health. Mm. It's a serious one. A serious one. Yeah. Now, when a man is born again, mm -hmm. he's spiritually alive. Recreated. Fully. Exactly. Recreated from the within. Mm -hmm. But the soul prosperity is a journey. Mm. It's a process. Mm -hmm. So the question is, how do I transport Mm. My spiritual experience into my mental well-being. Yeah, through the Word of God. Mm. The book of uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2, talks okay. about the fact that we should not be conformed to the superficial customs and practices of this world, mm. but that we should be transformed. Mm. That's that rescripted mm. of the mind. Mm. We should be transformed by the renewal of our mind. Mm. so that we can now prove the will of God. Mm. Now, that, re that renewal of the mind is crucial because even though my spirit is born again, mm -hmm. my soul is not yet born again. That's right. My soul is not automatically prosperous. Mm. It takes a conscious effort on my part, recognizing that my soul is not functioning well, mm. to recognizing the role of the word mm. of God, mm. revelation knowledge of God's word, mm. in showing how how, only, how, how, how bad, how sick my soul is. Mm. And then the availability of the resources that is in God's word mm. to recalibrate mm. my mind. Mm. Hebrews 4, 12 talks well about it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It says that uh, it talks about the fact that the word of God yeah. is sharper than any two edges. So because it's like surgery. Mm. What it does is that it causes the dividing asunder of what is of the old nature mm. And of the new nature that is coming from my spirit. And it's a designer of thoughts. It has capacity to interrogate my thoughts. Mm, mm, mm. And begin to instill the new nature mm, into it. So mm. it's not something you do by laying on of hands. Mm -mm. You don't do anointing service for renewal and <laughs> for soul prosperity. You don't get baptized into it. Mm. You don't get anointing oil for it. Mm. I can't give you anchachi for it. Nah. For anointing. Is it anchachi? What do they call it? Mantu. Mantu. You can't get mantu into it. Mm -mm. It's, you must decide. And it is a walk. Mm. It's a process. Mm. James chapter 1 talks about, can't it all joy a when fall. your faith is tried? Mm. Because it's, a lot of renewal of the mind is not taking place in the Bible study, Sunday school, mm. or seminary. Mm. It takes place in the theater of life. Mm. 
when we face difficulties, Crisis. when we face challenges. He said, can't it all joy when your faith is tried? For the tire of your faith walks mm -hmm. these nuggets into your soul. Mm. But let it have its total work. In other words, it's not, it's not instant. It's a process. It's a process. He said, when that Ongoing work, process. when that work gets to a level, it makes you to be perfect mm. and entire, wanting nothing. Like you nothing. become mm. you become ripened. Mm. It's the same thought of soul prosperity mm. that James is talking about. You there. become sweet. You be all those criteria for mm. will be present in your life. Mm. Mm. Wow, this is really, really powerful. Yeah. You know, <laughs> how the, 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 the spiritual life mm -hmm. has an impact on my we mental well-being. Mental well-being, yeah. And when people meet someone, mm -hmm. the, what they interact with is the mind of it's that the person. It's the soul, yeah. It's the soul, because what you are is your soul. Mm. Your spiritual nature is that. As a there. man think it. So exactly. he is. So is he. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But you know, in Africa, we have relegated the development of our mind, especially in spiritual development, to the background. Mm. We are more interested in what looks like spiritism, mm -hmm. mystery. Mm -hmm. That if somebody is anointed, say that man is spiritual, mm -hmm. we are either looking forward to when he's working, is he staggering, mm -hmm. like he wants to fall down, mm. oh, is that anointing? Or mm -hmm. the man mm -hmm. that we have ascribed that spiritual status to, he gets angry mm -hmm. and he starts abusing people and cursing people, he says he's anointed, just leave him. You know, you know, you know <laughs> as you're talking, Dr. Iwale, yeah. I, I'm just thinking of the difference between Paul, the mm -hmm. apostle, mm -hmm. and Peter. Mm. Now, in, in advancing the gospel, mm. God spoke to Peter mm -hmm. about the creature, the vision he saw. Mm -hmm. He said, don't call on clay what I have already cleansed. He, mind. His mind could not interpret that spiritual revelation. He was locked up in religion. So a lot of us are locked up in the... You know, he was being religious. Exactly. Peter, Peter was trying to be a very good Christian. Exactly. Exactly. Obeying all the tenets and the doctrine, the way he but was But his taught. mind was not open. How many people's mind are open? You can, but you know, you can't have the spirit of God and be listening to your spirit and become rigid. Mm. Do you know that when a person becomes rigid, he's very close to being mentally ill. Mm. When, you are not, when you are closed up, yep. you don't listen to others, you know it all. Mm. I was privileged to give a talk at the Nigerian Baptist Theological Seminary okay. for our ministers this okay. year. Okay. And I spoke on spirituality and mental well-being. Mm. And I said there are certain indices that we cloak in religiosity mm. that shows that we are mentally ill. Mm. One of them is passivity phenomenon. It's a symptom of schizophrenia, mental mm. illness. Mm. When people believe that you are not supposed to use your mind, mm. you should let the Holy Spirit guide you. So some people take it to a point that before they brush in the morning, they say they're waiting for the Holy Spirit to come. <laughs> before they go to take their bath. You know there are teachings like that. Mm -hmm. So they become passive in their own world. Mm. Any teaching that makes people's mind to be passive in their world, all in the name of spirituality, is mental illness. Mm. I talk about delusion and faith. Mm. Faith is the assurance of things so far, the conviction of things not seen. I recognize my reality. I am poor, but God has made me rich in Christ. Mm. Not deny the reality of my state and just jump into so-called prosperity. That's mental illness. Mm. Mm. In leadership, we must allow people to process. Yep. There are leadership that controls mm -hmm. the mind of other persons mm -hmm. that will not even allow that mind to go through process. Mm. Even as parents, mm. they don't allow the mind. Maybe that's why they say children of pastors get rebellious. <laughs> Because, because of my profession, I want my children to look perfect. Exactly. And I don't allow them to even have a mind of their own. Their own. And before you know it, they are breaking the mind or making the mind a robot. Mm. And before you know it, the person breaks down mentally. That's true. And of course, a good number of us are not demonstrating the fact that this spiritual life is helping our minds mm. through struggles. Mm. Because the Bible says, even though Jesus Christ was his son, mm. he learned obedience mm -hmm. through the things he suffered. Mm. We, we don't see all struggle. Mm. We are only talking in superlatives. Mm. Paul the Apostle, Second Corinthians 4, he says, For we have this treasure in, earthen vessel. in the earthen vessel. Mm. So that the excellency of the power does not seem to be coming from us, but from God. Mm. He said, We are cast down. Paul was cast down. Mm -hmm. He said, We despaired of life. That's right. But the treasure within mm. did not allow the pressure, the, the pressure of mm. life, mm. the casting down to mm. overtake him. Mm. That's Christianity. Mm -hmm. Practical Christianity. Rather than I'm all of treasure, no earthen vessel. That's mm. mental illness. Mm. 
when you want to act spirit by passing the mind. It's mm. mental illness. And mm. you see a lot of young people are, are into it. Mm. They lay claim to a spirituality that you are wondering where is this is coming from. A spirituality that has no history of crisis of experience. Mm. A spirituality that does not show that they are human mm. and that God has helped them. Mm. No testimony of a process. Mm. Mm. It's mental illness. Mm. Because Jesus is God. Mm -hmm. God needed to become human mm -hmm. to redeem us. Mm -hmm. He couldn't have stayed up there and redeem us. Mm -hmm. There was no way. He had to become human. Exactly. We are not even now trying to be human again. We want to become <laughs> like the spirit completely. Okay, thank you so much, <laughs> Dr. Iwale. Uh, wonderful discourse this afternoon on the value of soul prosperity. Our viewers, um, I believe that you've been enjoying this conversation. We're going to go on a short break right now, and then when we return, we will take it further as we continue this discussion. Stay tuned and God bless you. Nigeria once had giraffes, rhinos, and cheetahs, but we have lost this iconic species. And we may lose our lions, elephants, and gorillas too. Be iconic. Join me to protect our wildlife. Report wildlife crime and say no to illegal bushmeat because poaching steals from us all. Born 16th September 1923, named Harry Lee Kwan and known as Lee Kwan Yew, he was often addressed by his initials of LKY. Lee Kwan Yew was a barrister and the first Prime Minister of Singapore between 1959 and 1990. Educated at Raffles Institution from 1936 to 1940 and the Fisa William House between 1947 and 1949. Lee Kuan Yew established a highly effective and anti-corrupt governance system that midwived the transformation of Singapore into a high net worth income economy within a generation. He never hid his exception to Western mode democratic ideal, which he believed had not assisted developing nations to attain good government. Before his death on 23rd March 2015, the People's Action Party, which he founded, had used its political influence to establish the United World College of Southeast Asia to expand his economic ideas among countries that constitute the Asian Tiger. Western Spring Television identifies Lee Kuan Yew as a major character in history. Did you know that it's against the law to treat endangered species in Nigeria? Did you know that animals like pangolins, crocodiles, sea turtles, and many more should not be hunted, bought, or sold? The best thing for them and the safest thing for us is to leave them to play their role in their natural habitats. Say no to illegal bushmeat. Keep them well. Keep us safe. This iconic African presents the narrative of a man destined to exert an imperishable global influence in Western education. His was a story of a freeborn, captured and sold into slavery. He was born in Oshogun, a native Yoruba village near Isei in Okyogun axis of southwest Nigeria. Samuel Ajayi Crowder was the foundation student of Fora Bay College, Sierra Leone, the foremost university where the pioneer set of native Africans were educated. Samuel Ajayi Crowder's greatest contribution to humanity was his translation of the Holy Bible into the Yoruba language. The man who offered the Yoruba dictionary was also credited for the translation of English classic hymns into Yoruba and the Ekwere languages. Samuel Ajayi Crowther's private residence in Badagri, incidentally, the first story building in Nigeria, is an Akaba museum dedicated 
to the memory of Africa's first bishop. Western Spring Television identifies Samuel Ajayi Crowther as a watershed character in history. Hello viewers, welcome back from that short break. This is Issues in Christendom, coming to you live on Western Spring Television. Today, we've been looking at the topic on the value of soul prosperity. And it's been wonderful having this discourse with um, Dr. Oyewole, who is a psychiatrist and also a pastor. Now, Dr. Oyewole, one common mental illness that is popular out there is the issue of depression. Mm. We keep reading stories upon stories about somebody mm. just dive into the lagoon <laughs> or jump from the upstairs mm. or kills himself and all that. I want us to look at the born again man and depression. Yeah. Is it possible for somebody who is born again to be yeah. mentally depressed? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Because uh, uh, being born again does not make you a disembodied spirit. Mm. You are human. And as long as we are humans, we are also open to a lot of challenges that any other person uh, yeah. is open to. We're human. And that is why uh, some people, when they preach faith, they deny the realities and the experiences of life. And they push people erroneously into a kind of a spiritual culture that has no rootage in practicality. Mm -hmm. Paul said he despaired of life. Mm. I quoted it in mm -hmm. Second Corinthians 4. He said he despaired of life. To despair of life means, what brought me into this? Mm. Where am I here? Mm. Life doesn't seem to make sense of it. Because we have the earthen vessel from Adam. Occasionally, the part of us that comes from Adam that has been coded several years before we got born again. Some of us get born again at 18 mm -hmm. within that new mind. Mm -hmm. The mind has been coded by 18 years before that point. Exactly. And that's what we have been using. Mm -hmm. And we expect that mind to just vanish. Mm -mm. It will be raising his ugly head. Definitely. It will be interpreting life with respect to the cues it has learned before. Mm -hmm. The onus is on us not to go by the way of what the mind is telling us. Mm -hmm. you know, the Bible talks about uh, strongholds. Mm. Hebrews, is it Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4? Exactly. Is it bringing down strongholds? Casting down imaginations. Casting down imaginations. And bringing, bringing into captivity every thought. That's so the warfare. I can be depressed. And as a matter of fact, through those experiences, we gain territories, spiritual territory. Mm -hmm. What do I mean? If I had, if something has happened before that depressed me and God spoke to my heart through a scripture, that scripture that God gave me to handle that depression mm -hmm. can be used for those kind of experiences later in life. Exactly. When at times I'm depressed and, uh, you know, depression is not just an event. It comes over time. Mm -hmm. And God gave me his word to be able to handle loss of energy. You know, mm. motivation is a serious, serious issue. Mm. A lot of our young people nowadays want energy. Mm. They want motivation. Mm. And so they go into drugs, they go into alcohol, they want to maintain high level energy. Mm. Real energy is not in chemicals, it's in the spirit of God. That's right. If the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in your dead room bodies, mm. it shall give life to that body. Mm. So, even though chemicals can make you energetic for some time, but it flattens out. Mm, palliative. Even if uh, alcohol can give you some motivation at some time, you still need to be taking more and be taking more mm -hmm, to go. Mm -hmm. But in the word of God, you can have sustained energy mm -hmm. through his word, mm -hmm. working on your mind mm -hmm. by experience. Mm -hmm. Those that wait upon the Lord shall have their energy exchanged. Mm, Renew strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. So That's right. You can see that as we are bombarded by the challenges of life mm. as human beings, mm. that makes us to despair of life, mm. that makes us to be unmotivated at times, mm. that makes us to feel 
we should not give credence mm. to the natural mind. Mm. We should continuously leverage mm. on our spirit and on the word of God, even in the face of those dark moments. Mm. I mean, I think in the Old Testament, somebody also used to have some degree of either depression or other, and then they would cause somebody to, to sing. Like King David. Saul. King Saul. <laughs> and then David was the one yes, singing, yes, who played the music. Oh, yes. Even look at the autobiographical uh, accounts of even the life of our Lord Jesus Christ as a human. Mm. He also had moments. He had his moment. Mm. He wept. Mm -hmm. Even at the Garden of Gethsemane, what oh, he went through was soul, was anguish of the soul. Yeah. Torture. And before then, he had been talking about how he would die. I will give up. But when that moment came, um, he needed the company. reality. He needed a company of people who were not even directly connected to his disciples. Mm. And then he, he submitted. The more we keep submitting to God's will, mm. our darkness, mm. mental darkness begins to go. Mm. Because most of our mental darknesses and uh, whatever we call it are products of self, ego, mm. trying mm. to live life on mm. his own. Mm. And God stops it. Mm. And then, of course, we feel we have lost everything. Mm. Rather than us leveraging on what God has given. Because if you leverage on what God has spoken to your heart, you are connected to a God that owns the universe. Mm. You are connected to a God that supplies all of your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Mm. In terms of recalibration, even when you are not seeing that physically, mm -hmm. it begins to change your mind. Exactly. Exactly. That's the strategy. Mm -hmm. That's the strategy of the renewal of the mind. Mm. That's why the testimony of faith is not in the physical experience you have. Mm. It's not in the physical result that you have, mm. but that in the change of our thinking, mm. in the change of our pattern. Mm. And by the time the changing in our pattern, our thinking changes, our environment changes, mm -hmm. and our mood changes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why I went to the seminary. Mm -hmm. I found out that the tablet lacks capacity to change thoughts. Mm -hmm. And I found out that it is our thinking that produces mental illness. Mm -hmm. Oh, my friend, we went to the same school together. Mm -hmm. He has built 20 houses. I'm still struggling to build one. Mm -hmm. His life is better than my own. My life is useless. Mm -hmm. Oh, I wanted to pay something. I don't have money. And I begin to think, oh, what kind of life is this? Mm -hmm. Ah, my life is finished. But that single event, mm -hmm. our mind is programmed to begin to go against me because of the Adamic nature, to say that I'm useless. Mm. People who die from suicide, when they look at the future, the future is black. Mm. When they look at now, they feel worthless. Mm. Even when they look at the past, they begin to feel guilty of several things that God has even forgiven them of. And before they know it, they just feel, let me just kill myself. Yeah. So it's a thought process mm. and it's a reasoning. Mm. So beyond the tablet, the word of God has capacity yeah. to change our reasoning mm. if we work at it. Yeah. This is very powerful. Yeah. Now, <laughs> earlier on, Dr. Ewole, you yeah. spoke about three things that I want us to quickly look into before we start going. Yeah. You mentioned the issue of hereditary, mm -hmm. and then the issue of environment, yes. and then lifestyle. Yeah. Now, before somebody is born again, mm -hmm. there are things he inherited. Mm -hmm. There are codes in the gene. Yes, genetic codes. Genetic, exactly. Mm -hmm. And that. This issue of depression mm. can also be inherited. Absolutely. All major mental illnesses have genetic codes. So how do I, as a born-again person, now that, what, is, what is available in the born-again experience that can help me with such a genetic code? Renewed mind. Renewed mind. Look at diabetes. Mm. Diabetes is a lifestyle. It's not a lifestyle. It's a dietary issue. Okay. Most people think it's a tablet they take. But the most important thing in diabetes is for me to discipline what I take. Having known that genetically, I don't, I'm a bit, I'm a bit deficient in the chemical okay. that helps the, mm. the, insulin. the sugar to come into my body, which mm. they call insulin, isn't mm. it? Mm -hmm. Now that I know that, why do I need to keep loading my body with sugar mm. when my body, by genetic programming? Mm. And we have, had, we have had diabetics living as, as late as uh, 90 years, 100 years. Mm. If they follow the regime mm. and they follow the instruction, mm. it takes revelation knowledge of body care, mm. not just medical alone, mm -hmm. that I need to keep, you know, just, um, Paul was talking about nobody hates his body, but mm -hmm. love it and cherish mm. it. So mm. the taking care of our body is a spiritual responsibility. Mm. If I am deficient in something, mm -hmm. And there's no surgery they can do to replace it. Mm -hmm. Why don't I follow the chemistry mm -hmm. and not feed mm -hmm. the danger that destroys me? Mm -hmm. 
And there's a scripture in the book of Psalm mm -hmm. that says that God satisfies my mouth with good things mm -hmm. so that my youth is renewed. renewed yes. So there are food yeah. that we eat that renews Absolutely. the body cells. Oh, yes. And there are those that we eat that also destroys the body cells. If you look at the Old Testament, yep. God came and was prescribing certain foods to eat and not to eat. Mm -hmm. Our argument is not the one to eat and one to eat. It exactly. is therefore to, that God is interested in affecting our lifestyle. That's right. If something is not good for my body and I have control over my appetite mm. and I'm not a slave of it, mm -hmm. I should be able to dictate to my appetite that this thing is dangerous for me. I shouldn't take it. Mm. Being a slave of appetite. Some people are not slaves to drug, to mm -hmm. marijuana, but they are slaves to work. Mm. They, don't, they don't have a resting pattern. They mm. just need to keep, and they are doing that work not because they are they love the work, but the work has become an addictive potential. Mm. It helps to release adrenaline mm. for them mm. to feel good. Mm. And they want to. Buy, if you are working with alcoholic, even uh, when you are, even when you are free, he wants you to be working. You are you are in trouble. I had a friend one time like that. I said, "Excuse me, man, sir. If you want to work till late at night, why don't you let all, that, all these other workers let them go?" Exactly. They want to bombard every other person into that mm. thing because it's a form of addiction, mm. you know, and they need it to sustain their own life. That's right. So what you're saying is that mind over matter, mm. nurture over nature. Mind over matter. Yes, matter. Nurture over, over nature. Over nature. Okay. Yeah. Because if you have healthy lifestyle, a lot of diseases that actually kill people, you put them at bay. Mm. If you had developed a pattern of thoughts, even though you are genetically programmed to depression, to schizophrenia, you can begin to identify thoughts and in the power of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God begin to displace them. Mm. Like the scripture we quoted, mm -hmm. bring it into captivity. Mm -hmm. Rather than indulge it. You know, some of us say they know we are in our family, we are like that. Mm. Even for people who, are, who don't break down mentally, there are yeah. patterns in families. Yeah. Some people are prone to anger. They mm. say it's anger. Our problem in our family is anger, That's and true. they don't want to do anything about it. That's true. Anger made your father to destroy his marriage, mm. your uncle to destroy his marriage. Mm. They chase some people away from their place <laughs> because of that anger, mm. and you are not saying because you are genetically coded in the direction of anger, mm. you can interrupt it. Mm. It's not true. Mm. Mm. So the God has given us a power through the Spirit of God to interrupt patterns, mm. even when they are genetic. Mm. Self control. Self control. Wow. I'm beginning to tra yeah. transcend. Yeah, you know, you know, the you know the, the when you talk about fasting mm. in Christendom. Yeah, fasting is not just for it, it, it does not only have spiritual value. Mm -hmm. There's also a medical value. Absolutely, yes. Where when you let your your digestive tract to rest a while, there is a way you feel afterwards. Mm -hmm. Like somebody said, I don't think we need to be eating three times a day. That one of the meals may not be necessary. That's but you see, we have been programmed to eat three times. Even when we are not hungry, we say it's time for afternoon. <laughs> it's time for afternoon food. Uh, you, know, you, know, for... you, know, you know, even when God, when God provided food for the Israelites in the wilderness, okay. he fed them twice. Hey. Yeah, twice. Well, I didn't know that. It was twice. I just know that one of the three meals is not necessary. It was twice. But we are already programmed towards it. And when, when, when God sent angels to feed Elijah, it was also twice. That's, inst that's instructive. So, twice was standard. Yeah. Because when I eat, <laughs> when I eat three times a day at times, I just know my body is heavy. Docile. And I just sleep. My mind is even affected. But some people are used to it. They must eat that. Exactly. They, and and they keep same, loading they themselves. Keep lo they keep loading the system. Some people eat more than three times. The system has not rested. They eat as they want to. It's wrong. Because that's why the Bible says all things are lawful. All things are not expedient. All things are lawful, but I shall not be brought under the power of any. Mm. Because look at obesity. Obesity is a, a serious problem. A serious or, obesity is a serious problem because it affects is a gateway to a lot of diseases. And it's a mind issue. It's a mind issue. You find out that with due respect, a good number of persons who are on the big side, they eat more. That's right. I don't know why. Somebody, maybe because the cells are bigger. <laughs> but then there was a programming. There was, was a programming. Program, yeah. There was a programming. And the day somebody sees the evil in obesity, not just from the medical point of mm -hmm. view, from the revelation. but yeah, that uh, why am I allowing my body to govern me? Mm. Because part of our... We talk so much about the mind. We're also not talking about the body. God wants us to own the body. Mm. God doesn't want your body to behave independent of you. 
Mm. So your appetite, whether sexual mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or food, a food should not lord it over you. Mm. Otherwise, it's going to put you into trouble. Mm. Do you understand what mm. I'm saying? So the Bible says we should not be a slave of any of these appetites. Mm. Spirituality. Mm. And it has to do with physical and mental well-being. Mm. Mm. So every, everything that we do, just like um, the book of Proverbs 23, verse 4, okay. says that uh, um, guard your heart with all diligence. 423, sorry. 43, yes. With all diligence. For, out, For of out of it are the forces that govern life. Exactly. You have to one, vers one version says everything you do in life flows from it. Mm. It determines the course, the direction Science support of it. your life. Science support. It. That's why mental health is a serious thing. So our lifestyles Life. are from the mind. Yes, now. A good, I told you the other time that when people become successful, that's when they begin to destroy themselves. It's not because they are now mentally ill. No, no, no. But because they are now successful, mm. they may live more sedentary life mm. and become more obese. Mm. They may not have time to rest. Mm. They may begin to now develop new appetites. Mm. Some of the appetites that is ungoverned. <laughs> Money and power brings it out. Okay, that's the way about message slave. shortly. Yeah, it's just that I think we need to move beyond spiritism. Mm. Africans should begin to work on our minds mm. in a very practical that's right. and a conscious manner. That's right. And I believe that God will guide us in a that. Aspect. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Iwale. Wow, what a time today. Our viewers, I believe that we've been blessed and also helped. I mean, this is so rich, so deep, so educative and spiritual as well on the value of soul prosperity. God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. I am Pastor Steve. I can't wait until we come your way next week for another wonderful time again. Stay blessed and let your soul prosper. Bye for now.